welcome to the modern day mom ig live chat i will be chatting with elam she is from apps a midwife ghana she is a midwife um she has intense knowledge and um we are discussing the various birthing options that women have we will also touch on how women who are pregnant can stay safe during COVID-19. Um, and then of course we had a few questions that our moms, you know, sent me um, that we will also get the answer to straight from a health professional. Nice. Okay, so, so Ella, welcome to the Modern Day Mom IG live chat. Thank you, thank you Vanessa for having me. Now you are a midwife, so for those who maybe are, don't know what a midwife is or really want to know what a midwife is. Who is a midwife and what exactly do you do? So a midwife is a health professional who has gone through the requisite training to acquire the skills to attend to pregnancy, childbirth, and to the baby and mother some weeks after birth. Okay, and how long have you been practicing? Okay, I've been a midwife for about 11 years now. Wow. Yeah. And how, can, do you know how many births you have attended? Or like an approximate number? Um, approximately, I can say about 4,000 births. Wow. Yes, yes, wow. because where I... I where I, I used to work was a very, I mean, highly attended clinic. Okay. And, uh, yes. Wow. Okay, so today we're touching on first the, the, the common birthing options. Um, I know there's the vaginal birth, there's the C-section, there's the ske set, um, scheduled C-section, unplanned C-section. Um, yes, yeah, so I wanted you to go through at least like four of them, the four ones, that, the four that are most common um, from the birthing options of women. Of okay. Women. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Vanessa. Um, there are three main birthing options. But for me to be able to give a very meaningful discussion, I would like to talk about the stages of labor because that has a connection with the delivery process. Okay. So there are there are four main stages of labor. There is the first stage of labor where there is onset of contractions and dilatation of the cervix. That dilatation of the cervix actually means the opening of the mouth of the womb. Okay. Then the second stage, the second stage of labor is where the mouth of the womb is fully open and the baby is delivered. And okay. the third stage is uh, where the placenta and the membranes are delivered. Uh -huh. Then the fourth stage is the final stage where baby and mother are wound in. Okay. Now, talking about the birthing options available, mm -hmm. there are three main birthing options available. Okay. There are vaginal, or we call it spontaneous vaginal delivery. Mm -hmm. There is assisted vaginal delivery. And then cesarean section. Okay. Um, I'll pick one and then I'll talk about it. Okay. So, spontaneous vaginal delivery happens where labor starts spontaneously and uh, the woman goes through the laboring process. Then at the stage where the mouth of the womb is fully dilated to allow the delivery of the head, the woman is positioned, then through her own efforts, she pushes the head of the baby out. So, of course, the okay. midwife is there of course, the midwife is there to conduct um, the delivery for her. That is what we call spontaneous vaginal delivery. Okay. Uh, the other type, which I said is assisted vaginal delivery, it occurs where uh, labor is assisted via the use of tools or techniques. So in this stage also, the woman goes through the laboring process all right, and uh, at the point or at the stage where the mouth of the womb is fully dilated to allow the head of the baby to come out, usually due to exhaustion or other findings by the midwife or the doctor attending to the birth, there is the use of vacuum 
a cup which is used to deliver the head of the baby or forceps. So in this case, the birth is assisted. So what happens is that the difference between the spontaneous vaginal delivery and the assisted vaginal delivery is that both, uh, I mean, for both of them, is the birth is via through the birth canal. But the difference is that one is through the woman's own efforts and the other one is done through the use of vacuum or forceps. Okay. The other type of delivery available is a surgical one where the woman is taken to theater, she's anesthetized, and uh, an incision is made at the abdomen, and then baby is delivered surgically. So that is surgical, that is cesarean section. There okay. are two types of cesarean section. Mm -hmm. Cesarean section can be elective or emergency. So elective through I'll speak, okay, let me speak to the elective first. Elective can be when a woman decides that, okay, I'm pregnant. I do not want to go through the normal delivery process. So when I'm 10 or when I'm due at a certain stage, I would share with my doctor or my obstetrician and then I go and have a cesarean section done. That is one part of elective cesarean section. The other part of elective cesarean section is where the woman goes to antenatal and then do, you know, during antenatal there are investigations, assessments, histories taken and all these things are done for you. So at this stage, you need to find in such as age of the mother, post dates, disproportion, lie of the fetus. And um, all these findings may not, or uh, other medical conditions, and the woman is not safe to deliver vaginally. Then again, when she's stemmed, she's booked, and then cesarean section is done for her. These are the two types of elective cesarean section. The other one I spoke about was emergency cesarean section. For this one, right. the woman goes through labor. Usually, when you are in labor, the midwife monitors you on a certain graph we call pathograph. So once you mm -hmm. hit the active phase of labor, you are put on this graph and this is this is a tool which is used to monitor the progress of your labor so at this stage what happens is that when when labor is not going well the midwife notices it and then in consultation with the obstetrician or the doctor they decide to have a cesarean section so the labor not going well might be due to say disproportion distress of the mother court issues or other findings so in this case the woman is prepared rushed to theater anesthetized and then cesarean section is done that is what we call the uh, sorry emergency cesarean section okay so other, uh -huh, go ahead yes go ahead. yes so other normal deliveries uh -huh. other forms of normal delivery can be water beds so water beds is um, mm -hmm. also done like through the vagina to so i said normal deliveries so what happens is that in the in the water birth parts of the woman's labor or delivery or both are done in a bathing pool filled with warm water so in this case also there's a midwife or a doctor by your side to support you in the living process and then conduct your delivery for you in a bathing pool in a hospital in a house or in a bathing center okay. there is also what we call v back v back is vaginal birth of a cesarean so for those mothers who might have done cesarean section or gone through cesarean section during their first delivery the next pregnancy after the doctor or the midwife had assessed them and has seen that okay the other histories both medical surgical obstetric histories and other assessments are well she's allowed to go through vaginal delivery and then she's closely and highly monitored that is what we call feedback or vaginal birth after the cesarean. Another time, other times too, there is in some countries okay. where home delivery is allowed, there is home delivery. So in this case, a team of doctors or midwives come to your home and then conduct your delivery for you in the comfort of your home. Uh, here in Ghana, we are really encouraging hospital deliveries, not home deliveries. So in short or in brief, those are the betting options available. I wanted to touch on the whole C-section um, because um, from what I had heard, when, once you have a C-section, you cannot give birth vaginally. But according to you, you can try that option, um, but you will be monitored throughout your pregnancy and all of that, right? 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's done. It's done for some people. Yeah. Okay. And also, some of, a question that a mom, some of the moms asked was, does the vagina stay stretched after giving birth? And that a lot of women are now opting for C-section rather than vaginal delivery because they are afraid that their vagina will not stay the same. <laughs> okay, that's that's very interesting. Um, so my answer to that question is that um, once you get pregnant, once you carry the baby for nine months, the muscles in the perineum, the ligaments in the perineum get weak. So for every man who has carried pregnancy before, these muscles get weak. So if you deliver through your birth canal, in that case, there is stretching of the vaginal muscles, which should return to its pre-pregnant stage within six weeks. And with effective Kegel's exercise, it becomes tightened again. It returns to its pre-pregnant stage. Um, for those who do cesarean section, then again, if you do um, your Kegel's exercise, it should return to its pre-pregnant stage. So it's not a matter of whether you deliver via cesarean section or not, but it's very important for women out there to do effective and uh, to do effective and prescribed Kegel's exercises to bring their perineal muscles to its pre-pregnant state and to tighten their vagina again. Thank you. Was, how long should a woman wait before having sex after giving birth naturally and via C-section? Okay, so here is the thing. What happens is that when you deliver, there is no time frame or time frame for you to be given an instruction to say hey do not have sex or do have sex but we say that once the woman is comfortable remember i said earlier on that after six weeks uh, the usually after six weeks all the your vagina return to its pre-pregnant state however if you are comfortable and you feel you, you want to have the sex you should you you it, it so it's it actually depends on the on the condition of the woman in whether she wants to have it or not. Okay. And that's with both vaginal and C-section? Cesarean section. Yeah, it's all about comfort. Okay. It's all about okay. comfort of the woman. Yeah. Because my guest last week, she said that after two weeks, she, she's had four C-sections, but she said after yes. two weeks, she, she starts having sex. And I was like... Yes, why well, she's comfortable. Yes, okay. why well, she's comfortable. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Okay, also, um, what advice right now would you give women who are pregnant during COVID-19? Okay, so Vanessa, uh, that's very important. The, the COVID-19 pandemic is a serious one. And people are, trust me, people are dying out there. It's imperative for us all to observe the precautionary measures announced by WHO and all the world health bodies, including our Ghana Health Service and the President of Ghana. Though the lockdown has been lifted, uh, my pregnant women are very special. I would like to say that as much as possible, they should take their prescribed medicines, medications at all times. And then again, maintain social distancing as much as they can. Uh, now, wearing of masks has become mandatory. So they should ensure once they step out of the home, of their homes, they should they need to wear masks. And it's not just wearing the masks, but wearing the masks properly. I know it's quite uncomfortable because it's a new lifestyle we are now all that we are all trying to adapt to. It's quite uncomfortable. So we need to wear masks. They need to wear the, their masks properly. Then, very important one too is washing of hands very frequently with soap and running water and then sanitize your hand as any time you touch any surface seriously if you do not have anything to do in town please stay home that's very important those are the messages i'll give to my pregnant women out there we will protect yeah. our, our our babies because all this is going to the safety of the mother and the baby right and what about those who have to um go for their 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 prenatal visits, um, how it's obviously the same precautionary measures that they should take and isn't it? 
Yes, the same thing because example, if you'd have to go and go for your antenatal date, you need to go to see the midwife. And um, if you envisage there's going to be crowding, you would have to wait. There again, ask a midwife can come to your home to conduct your antenatal call for you at home because it must have um that if that is what somebody would wish for stay home but if you have to go and see your midwife please go and observe social distancing wear your mask once you step out there carry your sanitizers around and sanitize your hand every now and then when you touch the surface so those are the things that you need to do okay so randy is messaging i think for his wife um oh he okay he's a male and he has not been able to um, attend antenatal classes due to COVID. Because you know right now, the woman can go, but they, they don't want you coming with like your partner or anyone. So he wants okay. to know, for the man, how can he now educate himself and get the education that he needs? Please come again, Vanessa. I lost it. Come again. So basically... He said Randy wanted to know. He's a dad. Mm -hmm who is not able to attend antenatal um, classes due to COVID. Um, and he wants to know how he can educate himself, especially being that he's going to be a first time dad. He wants tips, you know, like, you know, usually you can go with your partner, but right now due to COVID, they don't really allow your partner to even go with you for your prenatal um, um, checkups and things of that sort. So he wants to know how he can get information to educate himself. Okay, so you can call the you can call the Ask a Midwife line. We we have midwives out there who are ready to give you information on what to do. We could come to your home to um, conduct your antenatal care with you and give you other advisory as necessary. Okay, so Randy what you can do is send me a dm and then i will give you the contact for ask a midwife and then you can contact them directly and then they can give you all the help and all the education you need especially being a first time dad um it, it, it's a new phase a new chapter in your life so we definitely want to make sure you get all the education you need um Elam, last but not least i want to know what do you love most about being a midwife? Whoa, that's interesting. <laughs> midwife is actually my passion. I I remember the first time I saw a baby coming out, I said to myself, whoa, this is the most beautiful. Whether the baby comes with the head or even as bridge, the mechanism is so beautiful. For me, when a woman goes through successful labor and then it's time for me to catch the baby that's the thing we all say mm -hmm. and that time uh, when at the end of the day baby and mother are fine are healthy so some years back they see you in town and they say hey auntie you remember me you're the one who who, who delivered me it's it's so nice yeah. it's, it's it's so beautiful that's that, that that's that's it's nice then once more when you see your clients deliver their baby and they are sharing the love between mother and, and child, not mother and baby. It's so beautiful. So every moment you may be free from all the experiences, even the challenges I go through every day as a midwife on the ward, it's, um, it's, it's, it's nice because I love what I do. The sad part of it is that when the unfortunate happen, and example, you have to counsel the mother who has lost a baby or who has uh, delivered an abnormal child. <laughs> Breaking the news is quite um, sad. But hey, you need to be professional and and and, and stay com composed and deliver the message. Yeah. So that's I it for me. Say, even for me, I I I, I didn't know i was gonna have a midwife when i went into when i when i started having contractions and i went to give birth when i went into labor but um i ended up having a midwife um and i found her to be very comforting um very calming and i, I don't know if the experience would have been the same if i hadn't had a midwife but she would just knew how to make me feel 
comfortable and confident that I was gonna be able to deliver my child successfully. Yeah, Vanessa, that's true. Most of us have the spirits. Uh, the thing is that um, I would, uh, after, from what you've said, I would. I I think I forgot to say something. Once you come, once you labor set in and you come to the labor world, it is very important to listen to your midwife. So once you hit the artifice of labor and you are put on that graph, you are being monitored. Your midwife comes to check you every now and then, check your baby, check the color of your lycor or the waters around your baby. And uh, uh, they tell you at a point when there is contractions. Contractions mm -hmm. actually means that every now and then there is tightening of the uterine muscle fibers and it can get very painful. And these contractions progresses as labor progresses. And then she will say beef to your mouth. I don't know if you've heard that before. It's yeah. It's one of the things, as the muscles are getting tightened, one of the things that you can only do for yourself uh, is to breathe through your mouth. Yes. And these breathing exercises are very important. So your midwife will teach you all this when you listen. And then again, when, as and when you need pain relief, she's there to offer it for you. Other times, people allow birth companions, probably your mother, your husband, or somebody you trust to be with you during the course of delivery or the course of labor. And that also brings some kind of psychological satisfaction and less pain to the mother. So all these things are very important. Uh, it's not easy. It's quite painful. And uh, I would say that every woman out there has different thresholds for pain. Yes. Uh, but hey, all the women who have gone through delivery, uh, kudos to you. It's, it's not easy. But you've been able to go through and the joy of seeing your baby, the satisfaction. And then you tend to forget all your pain you know so i think we is, is very important for us to listen to our midwives it's important for us to do the breathing exercises these are one of the basic things that we can do to relieve the pain during contractions and then get some comfort as we progresses. progresses. and really quickly would you um would you recommend an epidural i remember i got to almost seven centimeters without an epidural and I just, I couldn't, I just couldn't anymore. I said, I, I need it, I need it, I need it. And my, <laughs> midwife was, my midwife was like, okay, well, you literally have a few minutes to decide for sure. Cause I had reached that mark. Cause after I think seven centimeters, you can't take the epidural or eight, something like that. Um, and she ended up giving it to me. I was very relaxed. But then when it was time for, when she finally was like, okay, you, you hit you're about to hit nine centimeters i'm gonna gradually take off the epidural like and i started to feel that i lm i was just like jesus Je so i kept telling her <laughs> i kept telling her you know what i'll just go in for the c-section because i was like i can't <laughs> yeah and she was like vanessa you got this don't worry relax like i said the whole comforting but would you um recommend us i know a lot of there's a lot of this it's like 50 50 some women are no epidural and the other women are like just give it to me because I, I but i think it did it did slow down my labor process yeah that's true so mm -hmm. pain relief in in, in the, during the labor process is very important as it helps to relax the muscles the uterine muscles however there are certain times that it should be given so of course the midwife is well knowledge and she knows when to give uh, like you rightly said epidural may delay the the stage i mean your dilatation or even delay the first stage of labor to some extent yeah okay so we're but, talking about the pain reliefs mm -hmm. so i'm saying that as and where you need it your doctor or your midwife will give it to you um that's it. That's okay. the best I can speak to it because it's quite technical out there. Yeah. Okay. Ella, I think that you, you summed up everything that we wanted to talk about for today. We, we did all the, yeah, let me make sure, let me just make sure. Um, oh, and for you personally, this is the last question. Where do you usually attend deliveries? Is it a birth center, the home or a hospital? Hospital. Hospital. All my deliveries were all, all, all my delivery. I had a chance to go through quite
quite a number of spontaneous vaginal deliveries and uh, they were all done in the hospital and that is very important hospital delivery is very important yes especially in ghana especially, especially in ghana <laughs> yes okay. um elam i want to thank you so so much for joining me today um i enjoyed the conversation so much okay vanessa thank you too thank you for having me uh lastly yes my last words i would like to say that if once you realize you are pregnant and it's confirmed in the hospital please please as much as i know antenatal care is free out there and then the yeah. delivery process is highly subsidized by the national health insurance please do well to visit the antenatal clinic because there um at the antenatal clinics investigations are done for you you are put on the national immunization for pregnant women Prescribed, med prescribed medications are given to you. You are taught to identify the danger signs in pregnancy. There is birth preparedness plan made for you. There is, I mean, you interact with those who have already done labor or who have already gone through the movie. And then you are, so it's very good. So please, no woman should miss out on antenatal as much as you can. At least, what they say is very imperative. It's very important for all women out there to go and to antenatal. And also, when a woman finds out she's pregnant, she shouldn't be afraid to get the education that she needs. Exactly. Um, that's something that, the, uh, you know, young girls, if they, you know, unexpectedly, grown women, um, they get nervous. And then they think that they can care for themselves. But you need to be educated. And you, first of all, you need your prenatal vitamins. You need to get your checkups, as you said, um, just in case... God forbid something is wrong, then professionals know how to deal with the situation. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay. Thank okay. you, Vanessa. Thank you so much for having me.